In this introductory video, I'm gonna give you all of the skills that you need to put together a basic edit using Premiere Pro CC. This is gonna be ideal for the beginner, wanting to know how to get in and learn about the interface, how to set up the project and workspace, and start editing clips on the timeline. There's a whole range of advanced features that Premiere Pro can offer, and I'll be going through these in a series of videos on this channel. So if you wanna get access to these, hit the subscribe button and check the links in the description box below for related video content. Without any further delay, let's get started and get you editing your very first video project using Premiere Pro. So I've just opened Premiere and I'm on the landing page of the application. To get started, I'm gonna click on the new project icon on the top left-hand side of the screen. The first step is to give your project a name. I'm going to call this demo project, and then I'm going to select a location to save my project file into. To do that, click on the project location dropdown and choose the location. On the left-hand side, you get access to the files on your computer for importing your footage. I'm going to click on the sample media folder, which includes some samples that we can use for this demonstration. To select your media, you can go in and select individual clips, or just drag along all of the clips until they're all highlighted in blue to select all of the media in that folder. And then you can click on the create icon on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So here we are, this is the main interface of Premiere. If yours looks a little bit different to what you're seeing on screen, we're just gonna go in and check the workspace settings to make sure we're on the same page. To do that, click on Window, Workspaces, and make sure that you have your workspace set to show all panels. If you've just opened Premiere for the first time, it may be in the learning workspace, if you've used it before, you may have changed it over to any one of the other workspaces. My preference is to use the All Panels workspace as you get access to all of the control panels that you need on screen at any given time. Next, we're gonna go and make sure that we have our sequence set up to the correct specification. To do that, click on Sequence, Sequence Settings, and we can go in and select the correct resolution and frame rate for our video. We can choose from a range of presets already created by Premiere, including AVC, Canon, DNX, HD Video, DSLR, ProRes RAW, QuickTime, Sony, and so on. This can be really confusing if you're not entirely sure what your video footage conforms to. And if you're using an iPhone, or a DSLR or mirrorless camera, really the best choice is to select the DSLR option. Next, change the frame size. In my case, it would be 1920 by 1080. If you're planning on authoring your video for social media in the portrait style format, such as that which is required for Instagram Reels and TikTok, for example, you'd change it to 1080 pixels by 1920. So it's 1080 on the horizontal and 1920 on the vertical. Or if I wanted to create a 4K video, it would be 3840 by 2160. Then make sure that your pixel aspect ratio remains set to square pixels, non-progressive, display format 30 frames per second, and leave the rest as is, and you should be ready to go. Click on OK, and we're now ready to continue with the edit. So having checked that, the next step is just to adjust the horizontal and vertical sliders in the timeline section so that we get a full view of the thumbnails that appear on the timeline. So by default, it tends to be quite small and hard to see. So if you grab this horizontal scroller, you can make the clips wider on the timeline and you can use the vertical scroller in the video window and audio window to adjust the height of those clips separately. You can see that I have the thumbnail view showing on all of my videos, which I really like to see. It helps me be able to hone in on a particular clip on the timeline and see where it is positioned. If you can't see that video thumbnail, click on timeline display settings 
and make sure that it says show video thumbnails and also check that show audio waveform is ticked and you'll get the visual representation of both the video and audio. Now you can't see the audio waveforms on these video clips because they don't include audio. So if I just import an audio clip just to show you, file import and drag it onto the timeline, you can see that the audio waveform is displaying on the audio clip. You can drag the horizontal bar up and down to increase and decrease the level of the audio track. If you wanna adjust the parameters of the video clips on the timeline, you can click on the clip that you'd like to edit, click on effects controls, and here you can change the position of the video clip, the scale, the rotation, the opacity, and even the speed of the video clip. I'm going to be doing some more detailed tutorials on how to take advantage of the effects controls in future videos. But for now, just be aware that if you want to go in and change some of the basic parameters of each video clip, you can do that in the effects control window. Moving along, I'm going to show you how to put your edit together. Now I'm just going to delete those clips on the timeline by selecting them all and clicking on delete. Typically when you want to put together an edit, you can go into the media project window and you can cruise through your video clips and have a look at which ones you would like to add in order of sequence and simply just drag them onto the timeline. Now, as you can see, that's a thin strip, which is hard to see because it's a short Short clip. So I'm going to grab that scroller and make it a little bit wider so we can see it much better. So let me go and grab another clip and another one. And you can start to form the order of your edit just by dragging them from left to right. There is a better way of doing it, however, and that is to cut the clips before you even drag them on the timeline. So let's grab our first clip by double clicking on it in the project window. And in the preview window of that clip, I'm gonna create an in point and set the marker in. And then I'm gonna drag the scroll bar along the timeline till I get to the out point, click on mark out, and then drag it on the timeline. Get my second clip, create a mark in point, mark out, and again, drag it on the timeline. And just go through all the media in the project window that I'd like to add, set the mark in and mark out points and just drag them onto the timeline. Now you'll notice there's a couple of icons below the preview of the media. The video only icon will do just that. It will drag just the video of that clip onto the timeline and the audio only icon will drag just the audio portion of that clip. This saves you having to delete unnecessary media on the timeline if you're just after either the video or audio of that particular clip. So once you have your main timeline edit in place, you can click on the play button icon under the preview window to preview your edit. I felt that the first clip was still a little bit too long. So there's a couple of ways to edit that out. First of all, you can click on the razor tool icon in the tool panel to the left of the timeline or simply tap on C as a keyboard shortcut to activate the razor tool and click on the clip on the timeline and then delete the section of video that you no longer require. And to close the gap, you can simply right click in the region in the timeline that is empty and click on ripple delete. And that will bring the video clips to the right hand side across to the left, closing that gap. To make things easier when you're shortening clips, you could use the ripple edit tool. To use the ripple edit tool, click on the icon beneath the selection tool. And on the right hand corner of the clip, grab it and move it left. And you'll notice that the video clip to the right 
drags along with it as you cut the clip. And also if you drag from the beginning of the clip from left to right, you can cut a section out from the beginning of the clip and when I release my mouse, you'll notice that it brings that video clip back to the beginning of the timeline, closing the gap. If I was to do it on the second clip on the timeline, I'll drag it inward and release. And again, you'll notice that it's cut the beginning of that clip and automatically closes the gap when I release the mouse. So that's a very fast and efficient way of creating cuts on the timeline when you need to cut the beginning and the end of a particular video clip. The other thing I wanted to point out is that you can drag videos onto multiple layers. This is one of the main advantages of Premiere. So you can have as many layers as you like. So we've now got four layers of video. For example, how you would use this is you could have your main video on video track number one. And rather than cutting into that and then placing your second video clip, which might affect the audio on that video, you just place your second video as overlay on top of that video. Then you could go in and use the effects control and you could scale it and you could change the position. And you've now got a picture and picture style of video just by adding that second track on the timeline and adjusting the position and scale parameters. Now that we have a few layers of video stacked up on the timeline, one quick tip that I wanted to leave you with today was the ability to create a cut across all of those layers. In the previous method that I demonstrated where you click on the razor tool and create a cut, you'll notice that the cut is only created on one clip at a time. So that can be rather time consuming when you have multiple layers on a timeline. So in order to cut all of those clips that are layered up on the timeline vertically, including all video files and audio files, drag the scroll bar on the timeline to the point that you'd like to create the cut. Hold down Command, Shift and K together. And as you can see, we've created a cut on four clips simultaneously, two video tracks and two audio tracks at once. Now, if I expand that out a little bit more so I can get a closer view, I can go in to this point over here on the timeline, Command-Shift-K, and select all these clips in the middle, delete them, right click on the gap in between the two video clips and select ripple delete to close the gap and I can go ahead and continue editing in that way on the timeline. So that's a very quick introduction to how to put together a basic video edit using Premiere Pro. I'm going to be creating additional content in the future on how to use some of the advanced features of Premiere Pro, including how to synchronize and master audio, how to add transitions and titles and so much more. So if you wanna check those videos out, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're notified as soon as they become available. Before we conclude this video, I'm just gonna show you how to export your video in the event that you need to get your project out immediately. In order to do that, click on the export icon on the top left hand corner. And then on the left hand side, you have a number of different presets to export your video to. So select the preset that best suits your requirement. In this case, we are going to YouTube. So you'd click on the YouTube preset, click on the blue toggle switch to the right hand side of that, give your file a name, choose a location where you'd like to save the file, and then select the correct preset according to your footage, whether it's 1080p or 2160p 4K or any other option that's available here in the drop down list. 
I would like this to be exported out to 1080p HD. So I'm going to select that preset and the format should remain at H.264, which is the best for YouTube. And you can opt to sign into YouTube within Premiere so that once you export the video, it's automatically uploaded to YouTube at the same time. And when you do that, you get an option to select your channel, the playlist, and you can even add a title and description to the video. Now, I prefer not to do this for privacy reasons. I just tend to export my video file out to my desktop, and then I'll upload it to YouTube using YouTube Studio. So if that's the case, you don't need to sign in, just click on export and the video file will be saved to your desktop. Another option is to use the send to media encoder icon below and that opens up the Adobe media encoder. The media encoder has many more options when it comes to exporting your file out. If you have a look at the drop down on the left hand side here, you have all these different codecs and you have all these quality options to choose from, including specific resolutions, mobile device, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube and so on. So quite a lot of options there. And you can also select the rendering engine. And one of the other advantages of using the media encoder is that whilst your media is encoding, you can go back into Premiere Pro and edit another video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And as always, if you have any comments or questions on the content you've seen today, drop them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. Bye for now.